right? Yeah. Man, that that happened that. to me my first time. I was. I'm old school. Well, <laughs> yeah. isn't where's is Zoom American or Zoom Chinese? Um, let's see. I don't know who makes Zoom. I, I you know what? I, I think I believe the reason why I didn't download it was. I heard it was Chinese. It was last year during the Corona thing. I'm getting rid of TikTok. I'm getting rid of like all that Chinese stuff. I, WeChat. Yeah. TikTok uh, is is like a Trojan horse on your phone, right? Just like I yeah. I erased. I was scared. I erased TikTok. Plus, I'm too old uh, for that shit. I, I don't really understand it. You know, all that you know, it's all just dancing and weirdness. But uh, I have friends that love it. Their whole family does it dance. You know, it's nice to see their videos, but the rest of it is just putting on makeup and like, why am I watching this? Like, people are hooked to it. Yeah. But not my. There, there's other th- things I'd rather be doing. But did you have you done any TikTok? Nah, I downloaded it once and then uh, and then I deleted it right away because there was like all these things. Uh, <laughs> came up yeah one there. time one time i had wechat and tiktok and uh you know a uh, uh, snapchat and all that. like just like i'm thinking anyone who i'm talking to and i like i'm talking to on one on one to, on one app messenger you know just whatever uh yeah and uh, actually funny on um what's the one we oh, come to my mind but uh, i met a friend to wechat too uh, what's the what's what's Instagram? Instant, yeah, I yeah. I uh, for some reason I downloaded it and on there was a message from a very good friend of mine from like last year, uh, leaving a message and asking how I was and they're trying to get a hold of me for like so long because I've moved to Asia since Canada and uh, if it wasn't like I'm thankful uh, for downloading that app, I don't talk to anybody else on it, but yeah, it was. If I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have found her. But yeah, I just keep more or less one chat app on my thing. Yeah, and Zoom. I'm I'm stuck to Zoom now. Yeah, Zoom. Zoom's good. Uh, Microsoft Teams is not so good. That's the Zoom's cool. I think who made Zoom? I think Zoom is American. I want to say Zoom's American. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll bet you a coffee. It's Chinese. All right, deal. Okay, deal. All right. Right. And when when are we gonna have that coffee, man? What's this? Uh, how long are we in jail for you, bro? Um, don't we get another chance on Sunday? Sunday is like the the two week after the first two weeks, or is it only been one week after the first two weeks? Uh, it's, I think two hundred years. Damn! Wow. wow. In four days, a long time, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, everyone else is, I mean, not everyone else, but America's opening, but now Vietnam's closed again. But damn, man, I know. Another friend just texted me this morning. I'm leaving. See ya. I'm leaving the country. Going back to yeah. England. Yeah, it's it's a hard decision, man. It's uh... I'm staying, man. I don't. I got my visa for another year or two, year and a half. I'm good. I'm staying. And there's just too much stuff I got going on here. If I move back now, I'm going to have to, damn, I got to. Exactly. Start again. You know, me, I've been here in Asia. For, I've been in Asia for 20 years. Like, what would I be doing back in Canada? Yeah. Um, Vietnam, other than this, other than this pandemic, Vietnam is the place to be, man. It's it's the quiet dragon waking up, developing. Yeah. Like I seen China in the like when I was there for ten years, it really developed, and you know had the the expo, the Olympics. Um, but now I see that with Vietnam now. You look in the skyline, you see crane after crane after crane, building going up after building going up. So it's gonna be it's a good time to be here. So yeah, I don't blame it. It is. But it? I understand people leave. People have to leave for their own reasons and needs, and you know, so no shame to them. Yeah, they're not. Like, they're, it's not like I'm give. They're giving up. You know what I mean? They're not. So. And some people are getting kicked out. Like they go to uh, get a new visa, and it's just like boom, they stamp it with the X. Like you gotta go. 
like I was watching some YouTubers, like they've been here during Denong and then just they just like try to reapply for a new three month visa and then just stamped it like psh, like we gotta leave in 10 days. And they're like they're just like running around. But people are going to Bali. People that don't want to go home, Bali's taking people from Vietnam. Bali. Bali, yeah. I've never been there, but apparently it's pretty nice and you can find jobs there. English job, English it, teacher. It don't sell. It, it don't snow there. No, no. Indonesia? No. Ah, yeah, no. Uh, no, it's a nice place. I have friends there. It's a really nice place as well. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to go there, but can't go anywhere right now. Didn't you go to, like, where did you go and you got almost trapped? Oh, you went to... um. Hong Kong, right? You know, Hong that Kong? wasn't the COVID. That was the, was that the COVID lockdown? We got almost trapped in Hong Kong. No, no, I, I went to Hong Kong and it was great. Left and then it sparked off with that, uh, with that oh. umbrella movement. Ah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Like I was shocked and going, I, I was looking at the news going, I was just there yesterday. Yeah. You would never know. It was, you know, and then boom, you know, Hong Kong shut down. But uh, yeah, if I hadn't got out of there that day, we would have been probably shut down at the airport. Yeah, damn, crazy. To be out. Now Hong Kong's gone now, huh? Look, I got, you know, I got uh, yeah, it's a shame. But... Yeah, I remember I was flying through Taiwan <laughs> one time and I pick up the newspaper and it says like, China has missiles aimed at Taiwan and they're ready to shoot at 6 p.m. And my flight was at like 5.55. I was like, oh, shit. And then I you know, got on the plane. You, and like, We're delayed for 10 minutes. I'm like, just go. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> have you been to China? Uh, no, never. Never on the mainland. Just flew through Taiwan a few times. When when you work there, they, they more or less tell you, do not talk about the three Tays. Yeah. Tibet, Tiananmen, and Taiwan. Damn. You don't talk, you don't talk about those at all. No. Um, but yeah, like Taiwan's part of China. It's to them, it's a province. And uh, going and being in the educational system, I see them studying it and all that, right? Mm -hmm. But I also have friends in Taiwan that totally disagree, right? So it's just really bizarre that 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 whole thing is brewing. China wants to take it over in, in due time. You know, uh, they might, they probably will. I don't know. It looks like China's just putting those tentacles out. But um, my friend lives there right now. He's, I don't know. I got to ask him more about that feeling. But yeah, you see what happened to John Cena. That guy, he just said the word Taiwan in an interview and he had to apologize to the to the powers it's you know like, uh it, 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 that's shocking that they have control over the nhl the nba hollywood you know it's just amazing they have that control uh the, the new top gun movie the new top gun movie coming out with tom cruise the uh the bomber jacket he wears in the original top gun in the 80s it had a a Taiwan Air Force patch on the jacket. Yeah. So they're using yeah. the same jacket in this movie mm -hmm. for some, I don't know how they're using it, but China said you have to remove that patch. And they have, they did. It was like, yeah, that's last Tom Cruise, last Tom Cruise movie I go to see. Oh. But yeah, they have that much control. Because movies like that make more money in China than they make in America. Like, Fast and the Furious 9, I think they made like 160 million in the first week, and then 150 was from China or some shit. Like oh, yeah, no, totally. It's, um, you know, let, let's say uh, well, I'm from Toronto, that wouldn't work. Oh, I would work. Raptors, we, yeah. we, we want to look up. So, you know, there's only so many people in tr Toronto that can buy a jersey, but in China, there's 30 billion people that perhaps want a jersey you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that's a, why would you turn that market down you know what mm -hmm. i mean do you want a thousand dollars or a million dollars you know yeah um 
No, not that they're buying Toronto Raptors jerseys that might that, but they're buying the Chicago Bull ones and you know the LA Lakers, the ones to, the, the fashion, the fashion ones, right? Yeah. So I don't know what they are in, in the States, but Canada, they're not cheap, man. They're oh, yeah. like hundred bucks a jersey, you know. Easy more. Easy. 150. Yeah. And, and all what, the what's the jersey you're wearing now? Oh, this is Deion Sanders when he played for the 49ers. Prime time. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. Footballer, footballer just coming out on uh, on the news the other day saying he's gay. First Ooh. NFL guy. Dion? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I didn't pay attention to his name, but I'm just like, oh wow. I um, wonder when we're gonna have the first gay hockey player. Come on. <laughs> there's all I there's gotta be one already. They just they, you know, then if they it's weird, man. Like no one, no one, no one really cares about that. Like I don't really care, but then some people would. There's, there's you know, always no, that. Don't bother. Uh, don't bother me at all. Like <laughs> yeah, don't know, bother me at all. Like, are, yeah. As long as you're making tackles was, and touchdowns, like I don't care you know, who you. I was in the Canadian Navy at a time that they were discussing that and thinking about you know allowing gay, you know, like. It, before it was you know no you know yeah. absolutely not no way now it's uh it's it's a rights thing right so to me it, it didn't really matter to me man like you know i'd rather be in a trench with two gay guys you know than in a trench alone you know what i mean like <laughs> it, you know so as long as they can do the job <laughs> as, as long as they can do the job you know it's uh not a thing yeah yeah i remember that growing up it was like now it was like, yeah, it was a big thing that like gays in the military. Now it's just like, of course, everybody can go to the military now. But I, that's so crazy that they actually wouldn't let them in. Uh, yeah. A lot of yeah. stuff's changing, well, man. 2021, it's, it's a brave new world. Well, you got women flying f fighter jets over our skies now. And yeah. So. You know, they're letting women in the front lines. And so it's an equal opportunity. Yeah. Oh, oh, what about the woman? Uh, or, <laughs> the New Zealand, I hear, has a uh, a weightlifter on the women's team. She she used to be a man, I guess. I don't know how to. She's, I guess, yeah. she trained, she, she changed. Uh, I don't know the word for it, but yeah, she's like uh, 250 pounds. She's going to be bench pressing or squat thrusting all the, you know, it, it's kind of funny when they, the sex change stuff. And like, uh, they, now that they're a woman, they want to play woman's sports, you know, like, okay. I, I identify as a six-year-old girl. So I want to play on a six-year-old girl <laughs> hockey team. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, uh, it's just come on, like, no, you can't, you can't be in that sport and compete as a woman because you're not. No, I don't want to get in trouble for that, but yeah, well, the way I grew up, you're not a woman biologically. Yeah, um, I just think it's not fair. I mean, for sports, but like whatever they want to do, otherwise, like go ahead, like that's cool. Just sports, because I don't know, it's not. It's, it's just not a level playing field to me. Well, sports is categorized themselves like that. Men and women, you know? Yeah. You know, peewee and, or heavyweight. And so it's, uh, they've categorized themselves. So when something new is coming up, it doesn't fit anywhere into, into it, right? It yeah. just looks as what it is to, I would say, okay, I'm going to say the uneducated public or the uh, unaccepting public. To them, it's just boys and girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I they have I, I, weight classes and all that stuff. I did see uh, um, a T-shirt. A T-shirt. It said it's okay to be transgender, and you can't, it comes in male and female <laughs> size. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's, it's funny that we. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Gotta make a new category. But yeah, I'm sure you. I'm well, that's sure. just the thing. What's the new category? You know, like, if I ever go back, you know, 
before there was the men's women men's washing the women's washing and handicap now like that's just going to be like my friends are saying this stuff's going actually going on you know it's just bizarre yeah it's a trip america america getting any uh anywhere quirky like that yeah yeah for sure for sure well you know i grew up in san francisco so i'm i'm cool with everybody i know i've seen i've seen it all growing up in san francisco but i just like the normal people that like if a girl wants to do track and there's this this kid that yeah, perfect, is just dominating sport. all the girls it's not fair i don't think it's fair i think the girls the girls should be able to compete against people when they're in their level you know perfect like, example track and field perfect yeah. example track and field right um so i remember this girl in my high school who definitely threw a shot pit a shot yeah. put quite far you know what i mean yeah. as well she kicked the crap out of every guy in that school too but, but, yeah. and she was a girl right yeah but uh that's a whole different ball wax yeah you know? Yeah, it's we'll, we'll we'll see how everything pans out with the sports thing. Other than that, I think it's people should be free to do whatever they want as long as they're you know free to be eighteen. They should be able to or twenty one, whatever. <coughs> should be free to drink, smoke, do whatever, whatever they want to themselves. Like it's it's my body, my choice, right? That's what. That's what we're saying right. about to themselves. Yeah, yeah. When it starts affecting other people, that's when, you know, you have to start yeah. having regulations and rules. But yeah, fill your boots. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what that's what we're saying about the uh the vaccines too. My body, my choice. But now that oh, it's man. Uh, I don't know. Some there was a teacher who a teacher, I'm not sure if it was a foreign teacher, Vietnamese teacher, but there was a teacher just died last week because of the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about that? You know, yeah. now that's just Vietnam, but this, there's other places around the world. But now it's coming out in Canada that either the second dose is causing heart problems in, in youths. Yeah. I, I, I got it all. I, I don't got the facts down, but there there's a lot of, hey, have you heard about this? Hey, have you heard about, you know, they're they're not tried, tested, and true right now. And we don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now if women are going to be sterile or, you know, blindness sets in. I, I don't know. I'm making shit up, man. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when I went, when I was in the Navy, we got a lot of vaccines, mm -hmm. a lot. But it was tried, tested, and true over a period of time. Um, but, you know, if you got a bowl of Smarties, can't, I don't know if you're familiar with Smarties. There are an M&Ms. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. uh, there's a thousand of them. One will kill you. Would you yeah. have one? No. <laughs> no. No. Would you give your kid one? No. 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 You know, now, say there's drug users, a shot of heroin can kill you. Maybe, maybe they'll go, oh, maybe I'll have one. But the point is, if, if you know something might kill you, there's that even that one percent chance, you know. Yeah, there's a percent chance I'm going to kill myself driving on these roads here sometimes, you know, yeah. like, but that's the risk that I, I have to take, yeah. you know what I mean? But do you have to, I don't take, do you take flu vaccines? Never, never. Never, right. So it's your choice and, and you don't get beat around the, the bra, like, you know, well, where's your vaccine? Why haven't you go? Oh yeah. my God, he hasn't got a vaccine. You can't come in here unless you have your flu vaccine. No, you know, and you shouldn't be able, I shouldn't have to tell you if I have or not. That, that's kind of where. It, yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? And you got to get a new know. one every year, so you know they're gonna have a new one next year for the variants, the variant, the, the Indian variant, <clears throat> in English the Alpha, variant. Delta. Oh. And so I don't know. I've I've been okay. I who knows if you got if you even you could have already had it and not known because they have the um. Um, what's it called? No asymptomatic. So some people yeah. already have it, they have the antibodies already and they don't even know it. I guess you could get a test for that, but well, you know, here's here's I don't think that necessarily is God gifted, you know, they got those genes. There's something with eating right, yeah, drinking water, taking care of yourself, exercise, 
you know, that builds that immune system, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. To fight off, and fight off that shit. Like there's really shit trying to kill us every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Diseases and bacteria is everywhere. Yeah. Um, some places worse than others. Like some of these real malaria, like this stuff will kill you, but it's up to you to keep your body good, right? Now I'm yeah. not picking on the people that have, you know, COVID or anything like that, but look at look at who they're killing first, you know? Yeah. Old and unhealthy. There's, you know, it's it's unfortunate. But uh I think you got a fighting chance if you do take care of yourself. So uh I, did you get the vaccine? No, not at this point. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I to kind of it, it pans out and I'll see what happens because I yeah, I did my research. I did my research. I saw a bunch of like what oh, the AstraZeneca one doesn't look like it was good for people under 40 or people under 50. Yeah. Like there's just too much stuff I was reading. I, I read some word it says like chimpanzee something is in there like there's a chimpanzee chromosome or some stuff I was like man oh no, no. I'm just <laughs> God I'm, do you I don't know how how if you're old enough to remember there's a TV show a TV commercial on uh, for cereal like it was a boring cereal it was like oats it was life I think it was life uh -huh. just like poor cereal with no flavoring no sugar and um, but that there's three boys at the table and, and the one boy says, go ahead and try it. He goes, no, I'm not going to try it. You try it. No, I'm not going to try it. Hey, let's get Mikey. He'll try anything. So they give him the bowl of cereal and he eats it and they're both watching him and eats it. And then he starts eating more. And he goes, he likes it. He likes it. Yeah. And then they start eating it. Right. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now is like, yeah. uh, and I'm not going to have the vaccine. I'm going to, here, let, let, let's let Mikey try it first. Exactly. You know, if Mikey starts going, ooh, 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 you know, and <laughs> wanting bananas. Okay. You know, I'll go with the, I'll go with the Pfizer. Bro, so I know, I know. You never know, man. Yeah, I'm waiting. We'll yeah. see. Don't, hopefully, because like SARS just burned itself out. Um, MERS, I don't even know what, what happened with MERS, but. We were scared when SARS came out. That must have been 2000, what was that, like 2002, 2005, something like that. And we we had that in California. It was coming to California. But okay. I don't know. This one is, this one was, uh, they're saying uh, it was made in a lab. Even John Stewart's talking about it. Like, I mean, not that I need saw that. Love the approval to believe anything, but. They're saying that thing was made in, made in the um, the the COVID lab, the COVID study. I saw his, I saw his comment like that. He was, uh, Steve Colbert was. They're friends. Oh my he was God. not happy that he he was not happy he did that. Colbert he hijacked. Like, Shut the hell up. <laughs> totally, but totally right though. It's just pointing yeah. out common sense. Um, I'm from Vancouver. Well, I'm originally from Toronto, but I lived most of my life in Vancouver. So we have a big Asian community there as well from all over Asia. And uh, of course, we were scared of the SARS there too. But it's funny, that SARS was a long time ago. And bef before this COVID got here, it's funny, when you fly into places like Hong Kong or Taiwan, they still have those cameras now pointing at you for your temperature when you get off the plane. Yeah. So they're, they're still looking for the SARS, right? But uh like chicken chicken flus like bird, yeah. bird flus yeah um canada we had to kill a bunch of chickens like millions yeah. of chickens because this stuff but um yeah there's stuff that'll kill you every day you know every day it, but the, they had the as pig, far as swine the lab, flu too yeah oh yeah as far as the lab when i was in the when i was in the navy mm -hmm. uh part of the training we do is biological chemical warfare Mm -hmm. and that's why we get all those vaccines that's why we put on the gas mask we're we're, we're learned we're taught to deal with this stuff right uh but that is a weapon that is a way like wars the, the wars of bombs and that that's going to be gone like i'm not going to say china uh for example china if china wanted to start a war it just releases something in the water the air on a person they fly them in the soldiers get sick they can't fight they win uh oh. but biological warfare is the uh, and it's a rather cheap way of going about doing it so it's real 
So uh, that's not saying it came from a lab, but I, I, you know what? I would think it came from a lab. I think John Stewart's right. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, the Corona virus came, you know, and there, it came from Wuhan. There happens to be down the street, a, a lab that says the same name, mm-hmm. you know, do the math. Yeah. Do the math. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, if there's an explosion of chocolatey goodness right next to the Hershey factory, you know, <laughs> you know where goodness. it came from. Yeah. yeah, you know, it doesn't take a Philadelphia lawyer to figure that out. <laughs> no. you know I mean? It doesn't. Man, so, all right. Jason, where's your, uh, you got your poster up? Oh, I want to, I want to see. No, your poster's gone. Oh, man. All right. I, I, I can show it to you if you like. Yeah. Let's, All right. No, it, just, it fell down. It fell, it down. fell down. Well, it, I see the Canada flag still up. Oh, the there Canada we go. flag will never fall down, man. There we go. There we go. That's the title. Bam. That's Jason's new movie. Jason's a filmmaker, actor, director. Wears a lot of hats. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us about your movie, man? Send in the gladness. Um, it's on YouTube right now. It's got what 23 chapters. That's correct. Yep. And right. and it's uh <laughs> his personal true true story about something that happened. What happened? Absolute craziness, man. Uh, well, there's a saying: you should never take your girlfriend to work. <laughs> I uh, I was a male exotic entertainer at one point in my life, and uh, I was booked in a town to do a show with a, a fellow colleague, and uh, we each brought our girlfriends to town. And while I'm doing my uh, business on stage, my girlfriend. Uh, got approached by another girl in the audience and said, see that guy on stage? I fucked him last year. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so uh, my girlfriend at the time took a, didn't take a liking to it and uh, went upstairs and started busting up the room, looking for a keys to drive home. The, the gig itself was in a two, three hours into the mountains. So it was a rather treacherous drive home. So of course I wasn't going to give her keys back. Um, and at that time she announced that she was pregnant and, uh, like I'm kind of in shock and, uh, the police were called and, uh, the cops seen the state of the room, her pretty face and her vindictive hell have no fear like a woman scorned, uh, said I had, I assaulted her. So the cop said you're under arrest and, uh, I, a trial came up, a trial came, I went and defended myself and uh, found myself convicted. But I thought, no, no, no. I, uh, there's a whole strange story I tell in the movie. I'm wearing tape recorders. I'm taking photos of us together. I'm gathering fingerprints, hair, fucking DNA, proving our, proving what one, what she's saying is not actually happening. Uh, in the story takes a bit of a twist where I befriend a lady that works for the Van- that worked for the Vancouver police and her direct boss was exactly one of the guys in, in an investigation against me. Anyways, to make the long story short, I appealed uh, by using a rare procedure in Canada called a trial de novo. And that means a brand new trial from scratch. So we had to go ahead with the trial. It couldn't be dismissed. It couldn't be dropped. It had to take place because it was an appeal. It had to, the, it had to take place. So uh, when it started, the prosecutor's like, well, I don't want to tell you the end of the story because uh, then people won't watch the movie. But yeah, yeah. In, the end, in the end, I won. But uh, the win is not um, enough for me. I want to go further. I want... Uh, my name cleared by uh, by written written i don't care you know whatever yeah. um i want some people uh charged and arrested want investigated 
And I want cops, illegal cops, dirty cops taken to task. So uh, it's not about me. It's about the, the money that was wasted on this, that resources stolen from real women that could have used that. Um, it's about people that took an oath that didn't live up to their oath. And, uh, you know, I worked for the queen as well one time and I kept my oath. So um, whatever, we're just gonna throw the dice and see what happens. But yeah, I did the movie during the COVID pandemic. It was kind of my uh, COVID hobby. Everyone had one at the time. They're they were building their house or, you know, painting a picture. I, I did up a movie, yeah. Nice, nice. Cool. Not really a movie. Uh, I'm not really a filmmaker. You'd have to make two movies to be a filmmaker. Uh, I call it more of a docu docu drama. Yeah, um, it's a very serious story. It's a dark story, but I try to do it in a really humorous way. It's funny. It's funny. I'm I'm laughing you the whole time. It? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't have watch the whole thing, but I watched at least like five, the first five. Yeah, I was well, dying. Well, I, you guys see the last five. It's, it's yeah. There. I'm gonna it's, finish yeah. it. Yeah, man. So you are a filmmaker, man. You're an actor, filmmaker. Um, you're not a doctor, but you play one on TV. Um, um, I've, we <laughs> work together. We job. work together. Oh yeah, you're the CEO of uh, many, many uh, corporations. So many. You probably forgot how many CEOs you are in this totally. this business. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm kind of having deja vu with this conversation for some reason. It is. I don't know why. <laughs> why is that? Have we talked why about that before? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I was. See, it's. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, again, would I call myself an actor? No, but I've done lots of acting work. But I don't feel it's enough to be quality. You know, nobody knows me, so I wouldn't cut it. Whichever. Um, I did a lot of stuff back in Vancouver, back when they were filming 21 Jump Street, Wise Guy, X-Files, yeah. those stuff. Vancouver was like Hollywood North. Everybody was an actor, extra, or seen on camera or whatever. But here, just, you know, you're the token uh, white guy. You're the token doctor. Oh, mm -hmm. he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, he must be, it must be real. You know, wait a minute. He looks a lot like my English teacher. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but... Um, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, rent rent a white guy. They have that here. They have it in China. They have it a lot of places. They just wanted you to. I've done things where I'm like signing and I'm just like, okay, taking a picture, shaking hands. Yeah. And they're like, okay, I'll, bye. You know, just wear yeah. something nice and show up here. And you're like, what am I going to do? You're like, okay, I'm going to freaking. Dude. <laughs> dude, China is a blast. Yeah, there are small towns. There are yeah. such small towns, and the small town. I was, I was invited to go to this small town, and uh, we're driving, and it's just like this. It's like a city, and like I'm like, hey, when when are we going to get to the small town? He's like, well, this is the small town. <laughs> what? It's like it's, ten million it's like, people. It's like <laughs> six million people. Yeah, six million people. Like yeah. Canada only has like thirty. You know, yeah. um, but. Uh, Anyways, I got to the school, I was supposed to do this lecture. Um, it was at like a high school, but man, I was flooded asking, being asked for autographs. You know, it's like the, yeah. every, by everybody, even the taxi driver, oh, I'd get your autograph. I'm like, just some, some white guy that <laughs> came to your town, but flooded. it's flattering, you know, it's uh, kind of cool. Yeah, my buddy lived uh, in China, uh, Australian guy, and uh, he said every time he went out, he never bought a beer. He, everyone would just bring them to his table, like, come here, here, take some beer, like, eat some fruit, like, here, here's some champagne, and just, like, would I totally, would totally agree. Yeah. I would totally agree, and it happens here in Vietnam, but I would totally yeah. agree it happened definitely to me a lot in China, yeah. but I, it, that's not a case of, to be honest, it's not a case of them being friendly on, on, on the 100% level, it's mm -hmm. more of a, hey, look, I got a foreigner sitting at my table, yeah. You know, that there is there is some of that, man. You know, it's not hundred percent legit. Hey, welcome to our country. Come have a drink with us. You know what I mean? Um, but I didn't mind. But oh yeah, you know, that's true. Don't pay a drink. Went to karaoke, lots, lots. Mm -hmm. Never 
paid for anything. Now, of course, yeah, you try to pay, but they will not let you pay, man. Yeah. Uh, when you're invited, see, in China, when you're invited, you're not expected to pay, right? So, yeah. you yeah. know, you try to offer, or I'll bring a bottle of whiskey to the karaoke, just like going, hey, I keep getting these free karaoke's, right? Yeah. But uh, it also helps when you're actually on the videos, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're was, on. Uh, you're a, uh, yeah. you're a, um, what do they call it? You're the, <laughs> you're in the video. How did you do it? So you are an actor. What do you mean, man? You're, you're being humble right now. So Well, that's, that's yeah. Uh, there's no speaking lines in the karaoke thing. Well, here, here, here's that story. <laughs> it was when I was 21, and I was an exotic entertainer back, uh, back in the day. And my this company called all the modeling agencies, the acting agencies, even the stripping agencies, because they needed actors and talent. Vancouver is pretty small, so they, they're... You know, it's an open call to everyone. So I went there and uh, I did one. I believe the song was a Brian Adams song. I can't remember, but uh, they required some dancing. So they're like, hey, this guy could dance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and he saw me talking to the girl, kind of warming her up, being friendly. So it would be easier when we had to hug or hold hands or at some point kiss. Um, so they just kept calling me back and calling me back for the next song. But I had another buddy doing a lot of the videos too, but he's getting like the songs like Michael Jackson, Smooth Criminal, and he's wearing and firing guns. I'm getting like all these Love Dove songs. Hello, <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so 18 of those videos and uh, I had forgot about them. And when I was in China and I was invited to this karaoke, I'm looking at the screen and I'm saying, that's me. <laughs> and I kind of looked at this button and go, hey, this, that's me. Of yeah. course, they're not getting right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. All yeah. over the world, you know. They're still you. That's crazy. You think, uh, I know, because I, I watch those videos. It's pretty old. Like, they'll just have, like, shots of, like, San Francisco and, like, yeah, two people hugging or kissing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, did did you get a chance to see one of my, my karaoke videos? There? I don't. I haven't. No. Met, I okay. probably have. I probably have. Okay. I've done my what, share of karaoke. What this company did was exactly yeah. that. They knew that all those karaoke videos sucked. You know, just yeah. like Niagara Falls, Canada. You know, the. Yeah. Uh, but they started mocking the videos of the real song. Yeah. So, like they they were doing an actual music video to the song, so it was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, I got to I got to drive a a fifty six T Bird. I think it was. Hmm. That was pretty cool. Um, a Corvette. Uh, yeah, we 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 uh, got to go to the, like one of the mountains in Vancouver. You know, right. where only rich people go. Mm. Whistler. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Some of the locations they did spared no expense. Whistler Mountain. Huh? Have you heard of Whistler? No, I haven't. I'm, I guess I'm not rich enough. That's the thing. Yeah, you got to be rich enough to play on that mountain. Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> frequents there. Yeah. Mount Whistler. Damn. So, so is that, so how, do people um in Canada, people like all, most people are at the border, right? No one really goes, so 30 million people in Canada, right? They pretty 32, much are. 32, 34. Okay. Damn. There's, yeah, they're, they're more or less at the bottom of the border, as you said, their cities are more or less at the bar bottom, but we do have cities, you know, above, like in, in like we got, you know, Saskatchewan, we got Regina, you know, Saskatchewan, uh, we got uh, Calgary, Edmonton, you know, they're quite above. And then, of course, you guys got Alaska way up there, and we got the Yukon way up there with ah, Dawson okay, City. Okay. But we got our Inuit populations that still live in their areas. So we've, you know, it's just grown and developed. So we got Nunavut, which is a, a city up there. Yeah. But uh, we got all the island cities too, uh, island provinces with their cities, Nova Scotia, the Maritime. But as a result of being so close to the border, we get a lot of American TV. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I grew up with Cookie Monster, you know, Sesame Street, all the American stuff. <laughs> so you got that. But we, we, 
we got all your actors though, man. We, we you do some of my favorite Michael Myers, bro, Jim Carrey, uh, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber's a, a Canadian. Leslie Nielsen. Oh, I love uh, Leslie Nielsen. Jim Carrey. Yep. Music to Brian Adams, Neil Young. Oh, Tom you know, Green. Dan, Dan Aykroyd. My, one of Tom Green, bro. Alex He's Trebek like from Jeopardy. Is he? Oh, Celine Dion. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, Celine, yeah. yep, Celine Dion. Um, yeah. Why is it? Listen. What does Canada do to make all these comedians? Is it you know, we in the have water? A, we we call it Canada brain drain. Ah, okay. Meanings we train them, we educate them. But then they go down to the states to get paid. Yeah, you, you know, like you you couldn't be Brian, Brian Adams is popular in Vancouver. He's popular in BC, but you can only play so many bars and and big venues. But then you got to get out and get paid, right? You need yeah. to do England, so go down to the states. Um, all our doctors were were kind of like socialists in the Medicare free medic, so they get their wages capped. Right. So go down to the States, you know, you can, I, I have a friend that went down. I'm, I'm not sure the sports team, I'm not a big NBA guy, but he works for physio for one of the NBA teams oh, yeah. making millions, millions yeah. because he's in the States. Kennedy couldn't make that. He'd be capped. Really? So, hmm. okay. um, I never, ever had the desire to work in the States where a lot of people do want to go work in the States, but uh, why does Canada produce a lot of actors? Uh, I think here's the here's one of the answers is America's American is, America itself is consumed. They're, they're, they Americans travel to America. They don't travel abroad and go anywhere. Uh, Americans watch American TV. But we're lucky in Canada because we're part English, you know, Britain, England, BBC TV and, and interests in there. So we we get all there. Uh, I don't know if you know any of those shows on the buses, Faulty Towers, uh, Benny Hill, uh, yeah. Dave Allen at large. So we're getting their sense of humor and we're watching your sense of humor and, and we're allowed to develop our own sense of humor too. So it's just di kind of different. If you look at uh, Kids in the Hall. Oh, yeah. You know Kids in the Hall? <laughs> they were that, Canadian. Yeah. They were yeah, Canadian. Not, yeah, they're they, good. You know, uh, trailer Park Boys. Oh, they're, yeah. that's right. Oh my God, bro. Hey, that was so uh, funny. Great humor. So, exactly. Just great, dry humor, you know? Uh, yeah. So, I, 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 why, why they go down to the States? To get paid, buddy. To get yeah, paid. Yeah. You know, but I'm glad that some of the actors like Michael Myers still kind of celebrates Canada and he talks yeah. about Canada when he goes on his shows. And, you know, yeah. he's a Canadian. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, yeah, Jim Carrey. Well, I don't know. I'm just like some of my top, top, top comedians are from there. Have you been to Canada? I have. I've been to the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, let's see. I went to Quebec. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, Levi, uh, Newfoundland. I've been to the the West Coast too. BC, Victoria. Okay. I think I went to Vancouver, yeah. Okay, Victoria and, and Vancouver. Wait, Victoria is a city, no? Is it? Victoria is a city on the island, Vancouver Island. Ah, okay. So that's where and I went. You need to take to. a ferry to go there. Okay. Vancouver is mm. on the mainland just above Seattle. Or just mm. above Bellingham, actually. Bellingham, Washington. Okay, okay. So I've been on the East Coast. I think um, I went with my grandparents up there actually my my grandma's french canadian she's born she uh french was her first language actually cool I believe. yeah she's born in a little border town and uh she was trying to teach me french and brought me to quebec and then we we quebec took a boat. she was, she, was uh, she no doubt spoke quebecois yeah yeah we she did we don't they call it French there. What kind of French is it? It's Quebecois French. Oh, Quebecois. Okay. You speak Quebecois you know. See, there's a difference between the Parisian French and the Qu Quebec French. Right. See, in, in France, they would say we, oui, but in right. Quebec, they go, wah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It's a very harder, more of a harder uh, uh, tone to it. Man, she would, 
So I was like 10 years old <laughs> and then she she would make me order breakfast in French and I was all nervous. I fucking she's like the waiter's really? going to get mad if you don't have perfect French if you if you speak English here cuz I guess we're in the old old part of Quebec like the real I'll tell you I'll, yeah. you're she's not wrong. Yeah. We uh my family we used to go camping or take long drives around the lakes during the summer holidays. So we went to some part in Quebec. I can't even remember it. But my dad pulled up to a gas station. I was just old enough to remember it. Where he pulled up to a gas station, the man came out and my dad said, fill it up. Yeah. Like, fill up the tank, fill it up. And yeah. the man put the put the uh, thing back in and walked back in. <laughs> my dad just, we needed gas. My dad just drove on. He was, my dad was too proud to do it, pumping yeah. himself. But yeah, it was like, they hate the English speakers there. There, there is a lot of the English... <laughs> English, uh, French, going going on right now. Yeah, right now and then the hockey right now too. Montreal, yeah, um, they're really doing well, but you know, not not too many people on other hockey teams. Yeah. I think the English teams are too happy about that. But I'm oh, rooting for Montreal. I, I literally went to a like a French area, like it was a French town. It was a went to my cousin's farm everyone spoke french i'm just nobody spoke english there i was just like we're driving around they're all talking i'm like I'm just sit here i don't know this is yeah in it's... quebec they have a yeah. you know language laws there in canada we have to have everything english and french That's right. english on the side and french on the other everything yeah. everywhere in canada but Quebec, no, no, just in, just French, just French. Yeah, because they're trying yeah. to preserve the language. They're trying to keep the language, right? But uh, that's cool. I, I'm, I'm down. It, it's cool if, but at what cost? You know what I mean? Like to to do all the printing back and forth. But yeah. let's go a bit further. Let's go a bit further. Every five years, Quebec. Oh, we want to become an independent country, so we have to do a referendum to all Canadians in a vote and printing off voting forms and advertising and you know campaigning to keep Canada together and um, so Canada has finally given up we've agreed that they're a nation inside of a nation really okay whatever that means but um, but it's kind of like if there's you know 12 people in your family and only one of you want, want to eat, go to Disneyland mm -hmm. and the rest don't Mm -hmm. You're not going to Disneyland, right? So that's yeah. kind of like the other provinces said, yeah, no. Yeah. So it, it just never happened, but it, it happens every time. So I'm really pleased to have the French with us. Uh, it's kind of cool to have, you know, different cultures inside of Canada. Yeah. But um, at what cost, though, right? So if yeah. it's my true thinking. If you want to go, go. Yeah. But, but, Quebec, Canada built those highways, pay us yeah. back. Oh, those hospitals, we built those hospitals. <laughs> oh, that army, yeah, those are ours. That, <laughs> oh, that money, ours, you know what I mean? So I, I believe Qu Quebec asked France for help, but France was like, yeah, no, uh, we're friends of Canada. So, yeah, you know, maybe you should stay where you are. So, yeah, but it's pretty safe over and all, overall, but it just brews up every once in a while. And they have rights to speak up for granted but uh at what cost I, yeah. I would like to see everything settled right away settle it settle it once and for all this it just keeps coming back oh, there's a Quebec, Quebec sit Quebec sit <laughs> uh Quebec sit hey you just coined the phrase hey. uh par parlez-vous au français uh un petit no that's Spanish um damn I used to know uh un petit peu. Uh, yeah, un yeah. Petit foot. yeah, yeah. Un no, don, je parle vous. Un, deux, trois, quatorze. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Mm, mm. Lady Marmalade, what? <laughs> Lady Marmalade, that's right. That's right. Well, I used to know I, my grandma. I, damn, I wish I could find this book. She bought me a cat in a hat book in French, teaching me French. And yeah, yeah. when I. So I was reading that on the way up and we're like, yeah, I went to Quebec and we I, we took the over, it was like a river, but it was like a, I guess, trolley, what do you call it? A cable car gondola thing yeah. over to Levi. 
Quebec is awesome. Bro. Vancouver is um, cool too. Quebec is <coughs> freaking beautiful. Quebec is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, at any time of year, the fall yeah. in the fall, yeah. buddy, it's great. Maple syrup, the best oh, yeah. out of Montreal, the best out of Quebec. Maple syrup. Really? Yeah. But, yeah. I love but, that stuff. And not to mention the 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 French Canadian girls, very well done up, very pretty girls, French yes. Canadian girls. And they speak the you language guys got your blood. California girls. Yeah. You guys got your California girls. We got our French Canadian girls. Hey. There should be a song about them. They're probably yeah. I mean, Bieber needs to do one. Where's what part of Canada is Bieber from? Who? Bieber? Bieber? Justin Who? Bieber? <laughs> Are you a believer, man? Are you a believer? <laughs> Come on, you know, man. Did... Justin Bieber. Come on, man. He... Uh, you know, I he's... I don't know. Where you he's don't from. Know. Come on, that's... I, I think he's from the East Coast. I, I really don't know, man. I, I, I've never, I, I couldn't even tell you one of his songs. I couldn't even tell you one of his songs. Well, um, he's probably the hottest selling Canadian artist. Wait, Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Um, excuse me. Celine Dion. She she's in Vegas. She was doing what well, every time I've been to Vegas, Celine Dion's working like seven days a week. There's always like she's a Celine that, Dion show. She got a show there. She might be richer than Bieber, maybe. But dude, um, yeah, as far as making the making the money, I think she would be the number one. Yeah. But we got Avril Levine. Have you heard of her? Yeah, I used to love her, bro. She makes a chunk of money. Yeah. Um, Nickelback. Have you heard of Nickelback? Yeah, Nickelback. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh, Tragically Hip. Oh, what about Drake? Drake's doing big thing. Drake's the real Canadian, right? Yeah, heard, I think have so. You heard of that? I believe so. I think he's yeah. Yeah. an R and B rap. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's I've heard of him. Yeah, but I've never. Uh, <laughs> I think he's from Surrey, Surrey, okay, but near Vancouver. So you've been to Vancouver as well. Yeah, yeah, I've been. I went like with a summer camp. We drove. It's I think I went with my grandma too. My grandma, my grandma brought me all over Canada. Yeah, well, to the coasts. Cool. The two coasts. It's, it's actually now called Hongcouver. Really? <laughs> yeah. It, it's oh yeah. It's uh, when Hong Kong was threatened by China back earlier when they were being given up. The British were giving them up. Yeah. Uh, so many from Hong Kong left at that time. And, yeah. you know, we welcomed them into Canada. But Vancouver, we got the second largest Chinatown in the world uh, in North America. And San Francisco's got the largest. We're number one. We got the second. Largest. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We have a. Totally. The Lunar New Year party in San Francisco is crazy. I think it's bigger than. Like, we have freaking. We shut down the whole city, have a parade. We have fireworks for a week, like all night long. They're, they're having parties. I love Lunar New Year in San Francisco. Yeah, the Chinatown, we, they were celebrating. Like, when I go to China, they're like, oh, you know, we're going to celebrate a lantern festival. Do you know what that is? I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been yeah. plenty lantern festivals in Canada. Oh, really? You know, yeah, we have a Chinese community there. But yeah, the Lantern Festival, Mid Autumn Festival, the Chinese New Year is just crazy in Vancouver. Like yeah. big politicians go to it. And, yeah. Yeah. And and dude, the food is just great. Vancouver is so diverse. We got great Indian food, great Japanese yeah. food, great Italian food, great Chinese food. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so good. And Vancouver is a relatively small city, so you could just walk or take a short ride drive, and you're eating a different culture's food authentically too. You know, that's cool. it's not like, yeah, it's not like Bob's Chinese food, you know, it's it, it, real, the real stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, San Francisco too, you go to Chinatown, it's just like, you forget you're in, in um, well, you just got to ask like, you. you. Well, I mean, is it, you catching the bus down it, like when I was a kid, you, to get to the pier, the pier is like where everyone hang out and play video games and play bumper cars and stuff so you have to catch this bus the 30 stockton and it goes through chinatown and it would just be everyone on the bus is like speaking another language they got like i'm not even lying this is a joke we i mean it's not a joke but there's like 
they were carrying like uh live uh live ducks or live chickens on the bus. I don't think they allow that anymore. But I've been my buddy, um he's like a famous skater, animal, animal chin. He's a uh, he's Chinese, American, Chinese. And he used to bring me to Chinatown and show me the place where you could buy like the live animals and stuff. And man, it was like, it, it's a whole nother world, bro. They have like an underground, like he's like, okay, you've been to the tourist Chinatown. Let me show you the real Chinatown. He brings me to these underground restaurants. He's like ordering for us. We're like eating dim sum. We're like the only non-Chinese people in there. Everyone's like, whoa, how did he find this place? I'm like, I'm with, I'm with him. Like, they're like, oh, okay, good, you're good. Yeah, it's we, cool. We man. definitely have some of those places in Vancouver. There's a place just known as the Green Door <laughs> and it's alley entrance. You enter through the alley, there's no address. The <laughs> door is just kind of like old faded green. But you walk in, the smells hit you, the spices hit you and it's full, full yeah. of Chinese. Like, yeah. you know, like it fully going like, I guess they don't, but cool. When you walk in there, you'll see actors' pictures up there. Sylvester yeah, Stallone, yes. and there's like about twenty different celebrities have been there. It's like, cool. Yeah. This place is like a real secret. Uh, yeah. Great cheap food and the noodles, buddy. They'll make them right in front of you. Yeah. Pound yeah. the noodles and they separate yeah. them, and it's just like, wow, man, this is like, yeah, a, yeah really a really good food. Uh, but you said it's funny if if they're bringing chickens on the buses in San Francisco. Dude, can you imagine what they're real? They're doing in China, wow. dude. After I lived there for ten years, <laughs> they're bringing like cows onto the trains, buddy. I'm telling you, it's it's uh it's quite an eye opener there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely chickens all hanging upside down, like, ah, yep. they're, like still alive, yep. hanging upside down. You're feeling for the chickens, like hey, you know, give the chickens upside right, give them some water. Yep. Now, fuck them, you know. It's, um, nice. but. Uh, that's the way it is. That's crazy. Yeah. I see that in Vietnam too. There's um one road that I used to take when I worked in District 6 or let's see, where did I work? Oh, okay, I worked in District 10, but I'll take the road through District 6. And it's just like that's like the chicken, live chicken sellers, and they just tie a string around the leg of the chicken. And they have like 20 chickens on strings and the chickens are like almost running into the road. You gotta like, yeah, I've seen, oh God, no, I can't even go in. I've been out to dinner. Like <laughs> this, this was actually last year uh, here, here in Ho Chi Minh City, but we went for seafood and I picked out a fish. I said, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll get that one there. And it was big enough. There was three or four people at our table, or no, there was three, and we we're expecting one later. So we got this particular fish. It was big. So I take notice the, the woman's going in there. She's getting the fish. She's walking right by our table out to the street and like smashing the fish's head against the sidewalk, right? <laughs> Two or three times. And I'm like, you know, and then the fish is carried back past our table, and the kind of fish head's kind of like, uh, you know kind of flipping with its nervousness go. i said to my friend is that our fish and yeah. she's like yeah god i'll never order another fish poor fish you know what i mean that's Bro. killed it right in front of my there it is it's so different when you see it killed in front of you like i've seen it is yeah i've seen a lot of animals get butchered yeah uh, i was at Asia. a wedding a yeah. wedding two years ago and they oh it was a big thing jace come we're, we're about to kill the pig don't want to see that but i did i went and saw it um they tied it down like his legs down they were like cutting its neck and they were keeping the blood and i'm like why are you keeping the blood oh we're gonna use it for the i'm like okay you know like let me know at dinner time what that dish is so i don't have it but uh yeah you're you're not in kansas anymore eh bro i know i've seen watching it uh this dude took a machete and fucking cut the pig's head clean off like this, bro. Clean like, off. Oh, the whole thing is just like, shh. I'm like, oh, shh. Like, ah, you didn't have to do that for me, man. Like, I would, I'll eat noodles, bro. Like, it, and, 
but it, but it was good. I mean, it tasted so fucking good. <laughs> it, it, it's so good. So and, uh, yeah, there. I love the food here. Um, there's foods <laughs> I won't eat. Um, I'm not into dog. You know, I, I won't even try it. Monkey. Ever? I tried it. I tried it. I'm not gonna lie. Ugh. I tried it um, one time. Yeah, I understand. It's uh, it, it tasted like uh, uh, you know that f- when you have like a wet dog in your car and you have that smell, that's what it tasted like. And I almost cried when I ate it. I was uh, like, damn, it tastes like my golden retriever. Uh, yeah, well, it, no, that's just saying it spelled dog backwards. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, D O D. Yeah. But, but yeah, I just it's just not for me. Uh, if there's a McDonald's within two kilometers, not that I eat a McDonald's, but if there is a McDonald's and that's the choice of eating dog, you know, I, I'll, yeah. I'll hike, I'll walk on bare glass, yeah, on, on bare feet on glass to go to McDonald's for all eat dog. Yeah, but in Kazakhstan, I tried horse okay. unwittingly. I, I was just given horse. Um, once I found it was horse, that's kind of lost my appetite for it. But yeah. I wasn't crying when I was eating it. You know, it seemed a bit different. But yeah, they eat horse in Kazakhstan. Right. But uh, yeah, I just said to myself, like, I'm not one of these foreigners that are, well, I'll try spiders. You know, like, yeah. I, I'm not like, I'll try to eat what I eat. I like to eat. And I like to eat healthy. That's why I love the Vietnamese diet. Yeah. You know, it's healthy food. So It is. It is. Yeah. China, I found it was healthy, but it was oily. But yeah. still, it wasn't like 18 ounce steaks and potato and mash, you know, lots of butter. It was meat, but uh, in small portions in the noodles and, and that, right? So it's very easy to eat well and cheap in China and Vietnam and yeah. stay healthy. Yeah, bro. You could, you could eat a very nice meal for freaking $3 to $5. And be versus in versus in the West, you mm-hmm. know, I, I don't know if you would disagree, but here you could eat very healthy for $3, yeah. but for three bucks, it's not going to get you anything healthy in Canada. You're, you're forced no. to eat that burger at a McDonald's or yeah. something for that cheap price. Right. Yeah. Which is a shame, but um, I've eaten health. Sure. I've eaten a lot more rice in my life here than I have ever mm-hmm. in Canada, you know, um, I, I look at around all my friends. A lot of my friends are out of shape and fat. And, you know, I'm thinking that if I had a stayed there and with that diet, dairy, and mm-hmm. you know, I would have probably been the same, but I'm pretty happy with the shape I'm in in Asia. So, yeah, me too. Me too. I've been, and even after that, I've been trying to, I got friends that are vegan. They say this is like the best place to be vegan. And, Cause everything like you go to the market, gee, if you spend five dollars at the market, you know how many vegetables you could get, bro? Like two big freaking bags, like enough you could barely carry, and you're just like, I got everything. Freaking, right? It's great. I kind of, I can't speak Vietnamese too. I do the body language and that, but uh, I went to go buy some limes, yeah. some limes, yeah, and uh, I just, I, I meant like. I told her like this, two limes, yeah. right? Two limes. Yeah. But I gave her a 20. I gave her yeah. a 20. So, of course, she's thinking I want 20,000 yeah. worth of limes. Yeah. I got like a bag of, bag of limes. You know? Yeah, so like two like, kilos. Oh, I only want to like two. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of that kind of thing like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's cheap, man. It's cheap to carrots, potatoes, onions. It's, you know. I got this no mango guy. This mango guy, he he drives his his motorcycle around and he has like a flatbed full of mangoes on the back of his motorcycle. And I was like, all right, come here. And I gave him uh, 20000 like a dollar, and he gives me like four mangoes. I'm like, damn. Cool. Is- There's a woman around here that comes by with mangoes, but she'll stop and like dice them up and yeah. put them with spices or any way you yeah. like to eat your mango. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't I haven't seen her too much since since the lockdown. But yeah, it's mangoes are good fruit. Mm, so good. I know. It's gonna be I love the cuisine. The food, everyone says the food is paradise. Even uh what's his name? My uh a lot of my uh you know I watch these shows, these uh travel shows and stuff. 
And they're always like, Vietnam's the best. Vietnam has, I yeah. don't know what it is. The food is just, it's, it's not, not as spicy as Thailand, not as fresh and clean as Japanese, not as, you know, it, it's, it's just different. It's got its own, there's so many dishes, bro. There's like, there's restaurants, there's like, 10,000 million restaurants just in Saigon alone. And then you go to the middle of Vietnam, it's a different cuisine and different noodles and different spices on the chicken. And you go up north and it's totally different. It's like, it's freaking awesome. I China Ch- China was a lot like that. If, yeah. if you go to the, to the north, it's spicy where it's cold. And you go to uh, the east, it's sweet. You know, you go to the West, it's sour foods, their mm-hmm. specialties, right? Mm-hmm. So it was kind of unique, unique like that. I was, I gotta say, I was kind of shocked when I first came to Vietnam mm-hmm. and we got, you know, I ordered the boon cha and yeah. I got like a basket of leaves put in front of me, like <laughs> tree leaves, you yeah. know, like what yeah. are these? Like what, what, what? Yeah. like, okay, I don't know how to eat this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what is the, is that a salad? Like what, yeah. there was she outside cleaning the, cleaning the yard and, put the basket down on my table and but um yeah i'm kind of hooked on some leaves now man yeah you know, you're getting the mint leaves and all you know it's oh, uh God. wrapping the meat inside the leaves and eating it it's oh, uh God. it's great if you try it right it is bro once you learn all the because there's some dishes like you still haven't tried and then your friend like you, a local one of your buddies will bring you to this place like oh you want to try a boon mom or Oh my yeah. god, Q2 Mook. Oh shoot, bro. When I'm, I'm just looking. I, I remember how to say it, and I'm like, you have Q2 Mook. They're like, no, no. I'm like, ah. so I've you- given up. I've given up on the language. Every I cannot what? spell it, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I have a, a list a, a a bunch of pictures of food I like that I've been yeah. at a restaurant. And I like I'll go back <laughs> to the same restaurant, show them their dish, I'll say, hey, this yeah. is what I want. And usually you know, the second time, third time, they're remembering me. Yeah. So they already know what dish I want when I walk in there, right? Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, can you speak Vietnamese? Uh, I'm learning. I'm still learning. I'm, I'm attempting. So uh, every day I got a little app. I'll do a little lesson. When I go out, I try to practice. I try to say as much as I can in Vietnamese. Just, just with, say, I go to... Um, circle k or i go to 7-eleven I'll, I'll try to say like uh uh um let me see tukla barbaron you know i'll say like uh moat cafe suda you know there you go well i gotta say i i say it cafe suda and they're yeah. like huh i'm like oh, fuck. come on you know i'm trying to i'm trying to turn my tones into the cafe so that you know like yeah. i'm trying to say it a thousand different ways right and then my vietnamese friend will come and join me and like oh yeah. what do you want and i said that coffee you know sure oh and yeah. then the guy goes cafe so that oh cafe yeah. So da. yeah. Like, what did i say what <laughs> did time, i bro. say every time you know, they, but you know i i think they should have got it we're in a cafe yeah. you know i got half of it right cafe yeah. <laughs> um but uh yeah it's funny uh I don't drink that as much. I'm the opposite. I like coffee with no sugar. And yeah. God, can you get a coffee with no sugar in Vietnam? No. They, they're, you'll say no sugar. They mean, oh, he must mean a little bit of sugar. You yeah. know what I mean? They love their sugar here to, to like, no sugar. It's well, like, sweet, oh, he must just sweet. You could, I know how to everything. order black coffee. You said cafe din. Cafe no. din. Kong dung, cafe. kong dung, no sugar. I know how oh, to do it. Dung. There's actually a song. Have you heard the song No Sugar? Uh-uh. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you after this. Uh-huh. There's a guy, uh, he was, I don't know, a famous teacher or whatever, but he did up a pretty good video, a legit yeah. video of a song called No Sugar, Please. Yeah. And yeah. uh it's kind of funny. He goes through the cafe and he's like, No sugar, no sugar, no cup. Um, he's like you know, Vietnam, I love you, but I'm really mm. trying to watch my calories. You know, he's yeah. got this really love, sweet love song. Um, but please, I'm asking for no sugar for the fifth time. Please. <laughs> it's, it's, going on. Nice. it's a cute song, but it nice. uh, makes me laugh. But, but. Bro, I know, I know. When I, I, I'm learning, but it's like, okay, you got to have like a real teacher 
to to teach you. My uh, friend, my friend's learning, and he has like a real teacher comes online, and they're just drilling the the tones and the ups and downs. That's like, one you thing. Have that's, real, one, that's one. That's one way to do that's it. That's part of it. That's part yeah. of it. The other part of it is the same way as you know. I've seen friends learn fluent Chinese, hanging out with them, man. Mm -hmm, going to mm -hmm. parties, going to dinners, going for coffee. Yep. You know, it's great to have the teacher, but it's the same as learning English. You can't just have an English teacher and think it's going to be enough. Yeah. Yeah. You got to actually practice it. You got to use it or lose it, you know? Yeah. Um, now, a teacher can teach you formally, but you're going to learn the lingo, the idioms, hanging out with your Vietnamese friends, yeah. you know, yeah. oh uh, what's it's being said. So, same uh, and, and, and you're English, not yeah. under pressure to make mistakes kind of with your friend as you would with a teacher, right? Right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, you got to go to a lot of um, uh, Vietnamese I, karaoke joints. and, and, and I watch, tried to get learn there, Chinese. Bro. Yeah, I tried to learn Chinese, but the problem, I traveled around China everywhere I went, but the Chinese in the north is mm. a different language than the Chinese in the south. They all got, they all got this Putenwa Mandarin, like a, a standardized English that the government said, okay, this is our standardized Chinese. Everybody must learn this in the school. Yeah. But uh, accents and lingos it's kind of like it's not so bad in vietnam but vietnamese say there's a difference between the hanoi and the, the right. ho chi minh vietnamese the, right. the so you can tell they can tell where you're from by the way right. you're saying it, right same as if someone's from boston i can hear his accent but yeah um it's a lot of work man so i, I applaud you for that and you got lots of time with this lockdown to study i know i know there's nothing but time i know but then I just like the days are going by so quick, bro. You just I, you wake up, you eat, you take a nap, you take another nap, try to watch some TV, and then freaking twelve o'clock already, and you're like, oh shit, Groundhog Day. It's weird. Groundhog man. Day. It's lockdowns are weird. I'm gonna like my. I'm all freaking white, bro. I haven't, I haven't even been outside, bro. Uh, like I don't go out. I mean, I go out but, like rarely. I was a little bit more in the beginning, but after like week three, I'm like, fuck it. What the fuck? Yeah. Start. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like yeah. Groundhog Day. Have you seen the movie Groundhog Day? Hell yeah. Bill Murray. Hell it's yeah. The same shit every day. Every day. Oh. Uh, I, I, you know, it's. I used to stay home a lot. You know, I didn't go out, but this is before the before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now that I have to stay home, yeah. I'm really dying to go see my friends for coffee again. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm know. like itching to get out there. Hey, you know, um, friend know. of ours just had a baby, Heinz. You know, like yeah, you, yeah. you can only talk so much over the internet and that. But I like to go see yeah. him, drop him off a gift, and yeah, I know, I know. There's nothing like actually being in place with someone yeah like my friend invited me out to uh go drink some beers i said where are we gonna walk around in the street you can't even like even circle k there's no chairs in circle k anymore they took all the chairs you can't even go drink a coffee on the street like right now this is like this is like no there's nothing i'll tell you the perfect spot a friend of mine's birthday was not too long ago, so we got a mm -hmm. bottle of wine and went under one of the bridges, yeah. one of the big bridges. So there's, and, and the, like down there, there's a lot of old guys fishing, fishing yeah. in there. It's yeah. perfect shade. And yeah. there's a, a lady selling iced tea down there as well. Yeah. But it was just a perfect place. Nice mm -hmm. and quiet. But uh, keep that in mind, go under a bridge. Okay. okay. It's not private. So there's people under the bridge drinking their iced tea to get out of the shade. But it's uh, in the evening, it's nice. You can see the boats going by in the river. Yeah, nice quaint night. Now, uh, you get a glimpse of that building 86, landmark 86, mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. It changes colors, it provides the lights, and mm -hmm. it's quite quaint. You can see that out my window, actually. I like that. That's the tallest building in uh, Southeast Asia. That's oh, is it? Yeah, it's the, okay. it's literally. The, uh, the tallest ones, the tallest ones would be in um, Singapore, wouldn't it? Those two, those towers. I guess not. No, that that's probably taller, taller than it. 
I don't know. Kuala Lumpur got some tall ones too, no? That's so, what I'm thinking about. Yeah, those, Kuala the Lumpur. double, that's, it's like a, the two twins. That's the ones, yeah, exactly okay. the ones I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's Southeast Asia, KL. I know, man. I, I'm so tired of not being able to travel, man. <laughs> like, I came here because Vietnam, you could jump off to all these little places all around. And it's like, bro, it's been a year and a half. There's a lot of great, cool spots just in Vietnam to bounce and travel yeah, around to. That's true. You know, if, that's true. You could. Um, yeah, like the totally, that's why that's the mistake I made when I was in China for 10 years. I did nothing and really went nowhere, yeah. nowhere that you would know. And yeah. that's that was the thing. People were like, oh, 10 years in China. How how is the Great Wall? Yeah. Like, I didn't get to the Great Wall. So like 10 years in China, you didn't go to the Great Wall. Well, how about the terracotta <laughs> soldiers? Yeah. yeah, I didn't see them. You know, <laughs> how about this? I'm like, yeah, I didn't do it. But they're, they're like, where the hell were you? Um, I was in places like where there were no McDonald's. Um, <laughs> and I, I was probably the second foreigner other than the invading Japanese to have visited that town. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I got to see the real China as far as I'm concerned, like the real people and genuine people, not like the city people. Uh, yeah. It was more authentic to me, more authentic. Yeah, that's like cool. Old buildings, old, like really old China. Like I've always had hundred year old buildings. Yeah, I always have a better time going to like the non tourist place and, and meeting people and eating with people, like instead of going to like the tourist place with 10,000 exactly. tourists and taking, let me take a picture. Like, no, I want to go to like, like where the people are, you know. The real people. Speaking of people, let me see. So, my guy, you did a movie with Chai Chitai, right? No, you, yeah, you were in his movie, right? Chitai. I had a short, short part in his movie as a casino owner. Yeah, and more of just a scene on camera. Yeah, um, shot two or three shots. Man, that's I kind of so had cool. to act with my eyes. I had to. I kind of had to agree to a poker hand with my eyebrow. Yeah, yeah. And he just passed away uh, right after the project, which is kind of shocking. Mm. Nice guy. Yeah, man. There's, I like the the scene out here with these. Um, there's really cool people out here that invite you to to like do projects and stuff. I really like it, man. There's, we've, I mean, we've worked on stuff together, but there's all, there's all kind of stuff that, like, this COVID is just blocking everything, bro. There's like so many things that we can't do right now. I hope it clears up, man, because I want to travel. We should make like some travel videos. I've been doing my little. <clears throat> I'm, I'm getting better at editing and learning all this stuff, so I could do everything with my camera. I want to. We should. We gotta. Well, you know who you should uh, cooperate with mm. is exactly Heinz. Heinz that was, yes. that was Heinz's job. That was Heinz's job before this pandemic. He was doing tourism for the Germans. Yeah. And he's got like a website with it's all German articles, but he talks about Pleiku or Dalat or something. Yeah. Like that. But uh, yeah, if you guys, whatever that you guys could come up with, and I think you guys could work. You both got the same interest there, so yeah. that might work out. Travel. He's very knowledgeable. He's very knowledgeable about very Vietnam. not, and he he's the unseen tours guy. He's like the unseen Vietnam tours. That's right. Like not that's like you're not going to Halong Bay. You're going to like somewhere that no one's well, been to. Like that's what I like. That's exactly what I like. Exactly, and if it is Halong Bay, it's a different part of Halong Bay that the tour don't offer. The normal yeah. tourists don't offer. Yeah. I've been to Halong Bay, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I got up there, took a bus, sl a sleeper bus, arrived in the morning, but I got to see the bus stop along the way and I ate some kind of side, get off the bus food. Oh. And uh, I spent like two days in a hotel, yeah. just fluids mm -hmm. coming out of every orifice. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then I had to go back. So I spent exactly two days in Halong Bay in a hotel room, looking yeah. out a window at Halong oh. Bay. I got to get back there. I, I heard people keep talking about how good, great it is. And they enjoyed it. So I got to get back there. Yeah. I want to see it in too. person. I want to see it. I've, I've 
seen 10 million. You can see videos about stuff all day until you actually like, God damn, yeah. that's freaking beautiful. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. 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 So I didn't, I don't want to make the same mistake and I'm, and I'm, I'm making the same mistake, which I don't want to make, but yeah. I was in China for 10 years and went nowhere yeah. that's known. Um, so I didn't want to say I didn't, didn't travel in China. I did lots. But I want to go to some of the places that are known. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I don't want to make that mistake about, uh, okay, here's what I mean. I've been in Vietnam now seven and some years. Yeah. I've never been to the beach. Fuck no. What an serious? idiot. No, seriously. Yeah, that's it's exactly like an what hour I mean. and I It's an hour down the uh, street. Vung Tao, yeah. But uh, it's just work, man. Work, 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 yeah. work. And now with yeah. this COVID, there won't be no small travel in anywhere. It'll be work, 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 getting yourself yeah. out of debt. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I'm I'm shining shoes on the side, man. I've had to start doing a side business to make money. So Damn. you need your shoes clean. Happy to do that. Wow, I'm gonna have to buy some shoes. Shine me up, bro. Fuck, that's crazy. I know. It's it, hundred bucks a shoe, though, man. I know. I know. This is. It's crazy. I'm. I'm just like. The thing is, like you, there's no work when there's COVID because I mean unless you have a bunch of because we're everyone in Vietnam teaches English uh, all the foreigners unless you have like a side a side job like all the all the English teachers shut down but you can still make money if you have like like personal clients stuff like that but no one wants to do it no one wants to do it online I mean you can do it online but it's like when the COVID hits, your job's like freaking stop. Well, there, there are stop. there are other things you can do. Um, I mean, and other things you can do in the sense of like these small acting jobs and that. Right, like right. clients uh, gets enough acting jobs. He's that's his now his full time job. Really, um, good for him. Pretty much, he he's getting a lot. But the, but but you can only you know you can only do so many doctor yeah. roles. You know what I mean? Before yeah. you run it out. But. Uh, the uh, the 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 good thing is out of this is so many foreigners have left Vietnam, and jobs need to be filled. Yeah. So they're desperately looking for the teachers, but then the bad thing is you start getting the crap, you know, right. that bottom fear that that they aren't serious about teaching, they're just trying to survive and to keep their party going, right? That's right. an unfortunate case, but um, the online thing that was never me. Uh, I have plenty of offers and I could have kept myself busy doing the online thing, but I don't have that style of teaching. And I actually don't consider myself a teacher. I'm yeah. a coach. Yeah. So I took a different approach to it and I definitely do it a different way. I'm kind of known as the chef Ramsey of uh, English teachers. You are. It's, oh my God. I've seen uh, your, your but, style. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I I take a serious approach, though I add some humor to it. Yeah. But uh, it's funny. They'll say to me, oh, what's the difference between a teacher and a coach? I said, well, for instance, if you're uh, uh, late for a team, if you're late for class, a teacher might say, please be on time next time. Huh. The coach will just tell you to go home. Yeah. Or you run know, some I, laps. I say, for example. <laughs> Do for some example, push-ups. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, if you forget your homework, your teacher might, you know, might remind you to please bring it remember next time a coach will say didn't i tell you in the first class i don't appreciate i forgot yeah good out see you later no second chance you know what i mean so you got to really i i teach a lot of companies i I teach with the companies and you know they're not english centers they're not english schools they're Mm -hmm. there to increase profits so if you're telling me yeah yeah yes yes everything here is yes then you better mean yes, not oh I'm sorry I didn't understand. No, you you, you signed you you agreed. You're yeah. buying them, you know. <laughs> like it's like yeah. oh no, I've just made a ten thousand dollar error because of a misunderstanding and afraid yeah. being afraid to say I don't understand. Yeah. So I do have an aggressive way I I teach coach, um, but it's to break their shyness and build their confidence. Yeah. They know English, but they know it. They just are too shy to use it. Yes. Two things they're afraid of, 
pronunciation and grammar. Yes. My first class, I say, fuck grammar. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Speak. I, you know, good grammar. Same. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me, teacher. Yeah. May I please go to the toilet? That's yeah. good grammar. Yeah. Bad grammar? Me. Toilet. Yeah. But if you're too shy to even say that, yeah. what's going to happen? You're, you're going to sit yourself. in your seat and egg and <laughs> piss yourself. So just, teacher, me. Toilet. Yeah, go. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Really? Okay. The grammar will come later. You yeah. know, it just... And, and then I show them my tongue. I say, eh, eh, yeah. made in Canada. Yeah. It will always speak better English than you, yeah. pronounce better than you. You are Vietnamese. You will always speak English like a Vietnamese. Yeah. Don't worry about your pronunciation. Yeah. You know, open your mouth. Yeah. You know, I'll help you with the pronunciation. I will improve it. I will yeah. teach you the, you know, yeah. the thank yeah. you, not thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, Chinese, it was, I think. You yeah, know, yeah. you look at, you know, I, I, I think so, yeah. you know, uh, thank you. Yeah. So it's really hard because they don't have that sound, right? Yeah. But I'll be put, I'll be putting uh, clothes pegs on the tongue and uh, getting them <laughs> doing it. Uh, yeah. Well, it works. Yeah. It works. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm about <clears throat> made in Vietnam. You know, I, I, yeah. I was in China. China made a shitload of money. Yeah. That's because I was there. And yeah. now I'm in Vietnam. I want to see, I, I, I ask my students right away. I say, <clears throat> listen, I'm serious as a heart attack. I'm yeah. here for the company. I'm here for the country. Yeah. I want to leave an, a mark, an impact. I want to make change. You look under your chair. Where's that chair made? China. You, yeah. your telephone. Where's that telephone made? China. Your pen. Where's that made? Hey, you mind getting up on your chair and taking a look at that air conditioner and tell me where that's made? China. Yeah. I go, guys, we got a problem. That's the problem. We got to start making made in Vietnam. You mm -hmm. guys got to start doing business with the West and the East and the South. Mm -hmm. You got to start learning this English. Mm -hmm. um, I will show them articles from from the internet. Mm -hmm. Vietnam ranks seventh or eighth in English. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Let's change that. You know, yeah. uh, English uh, Vietnamese. One of the articles: Vietnamese demand English teaching miracle. I'm like, mm -hmm. you need God to help. You know, God's too busy. God's yeah. too busy giving AIDS, AIDS yeah. to baby in Africa. Okay. Yeah. You remember your homework, you know? So it's about duty being retaught, go to public schools, half, half the class won't have their textbooks. You know, it's, um, mm -hmm. so it's, you got to mm -hmm. discipline is not the enemy of enthusiasm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, but if you go to like, okay, that's cycling. But if you go to like the small rural towns those kids are dying they'll, they'll fucking follow you home just to learn to practice their english with you so yeah i think it's it's different different where you go but it's true people they they don't want to put in if they don't want to put in you got to put in the work you got to actually like want it because i think there's two kind of learners that they say the one like intrinsic Maybe I forget the word, but like when the kids are forced to learn English, they're like English at school, English after school, English on the weekend. They're like, fuck this. I've had enough of this shit. That's and, why I can't speak French. Same yeah, thing in Canada. Yeah, you gotta learn, yeah. French. You gotta learn French. Fuck French. Yeah. You know, I, no, I, I, that's not my opinion right now. Fuck French. If I could speak French, I'd have a much better job. Uh, but it was just the way it was put to me as a child. And I yeah. understand that here. Dude, the size of the homework here, like little girls with a huge oh, backpack, the zippers are busting, like the book you have to read, and they're reading it, you know, you'll walk around, it's, this is Asia, it's not, let's say, the most developed, but you'll walk around, you'll see a house with one small light bulb, the girl's yep. got her head right in the head, homework, yep. looking at it, and 11 o'clock at night, you know, Bro, definitely hard. From, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., <laughs> then after school program, then four hours of homework, all, every day then saturday they got english school for two hours and then damn bro it, it they're learning they're learning calculus they're learning in sixth grade they're learning um um uh physics uh physics and uh you know all that like they're so i mean they are they're ready to learn english they're smart as hell, but they got all this other stuff they have to learn. It's very, 
I, I don't know if they do that to keep the kids out of trouble or or to because like none of the it it the kids here are, are pretty much good. They're there's not like it's not like America where where kids are not getting into as much trouble here. I feel like I feel like their times taken oh. up by more more schoolwork and their parents right. are stricter here. Then yeah, I, and I'm you know saying. the parents, the parents need to. There's a lot of tiger moms here. You know, yeah. the parents need to. Like you know, when we were young, we had Saturday and Sunday. And would you yeah. be doing homework on Saturday or Sunday? Yeah. Eh, you know, my your mom, make sure you get your homework done. Yeah, yeah, mom. Yeah. The, the screen door makes you running outside. You aren't yeah. seen till after dinner. Till dinner. Yeah. They don't have. Well, well let, look at they. They work six days a week here. You know, yeah. like, sit sticks in the, like easily five and so, a half days a week like they work half some day people on work Saturday, 29 right? days a month bro 29 days so, they yeah. get like two days off a month like my friend who worked at the coffee shop he's like yeah i get i gotta ask my boss for a day off this this month i was like holy shit i mean I'm, i've worked two three jobs before in my life and worked every day before but that's like they're at the coffee shop 12 hours a day seven days a week and they're making ten dollars a day. I'm like, damn, you should you might as well learn English, try to get up out of out of that uh uh rat race. Cause if you learn English here, you're gonna get a better job. You're gonna be able to go to a better college, you're gonna be able to travel, you may go to Australia, you may go to Canada, you may go to and America. And you know what? That was that was true to a point. Yeah. But now it's can you speak Chinese as well? Can you speak mm. Korean as well? Do you have a third language? Because now, you know, before it was like, you know, not many English speakers then. Oh, and English speakers, they all got good jobs. But now pretty much everybody speaks English here. And now it's what what else do you have? And I would rather hire the person with two or three languages than just the one other language and not being really that good at it. Plus, if if someone's learning two or three languages, oh, they like to work. They like to study. They like to, they got a good ethic. They got a good yeah. discipline. But my students, uh, they find me I, yeah. I, and, um, and I interview them. Yeah. I, I don't take on anybody. They got to, they got to make me look good. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to help, help me help you. That's yeah. exactly what I tell them. Help me help you. And you're not helping me by forgetting your dicks. Like I'll go to yeah. a first class. I'll tell them what they'll need. And they'll forget. They'll forget yep. one little detail, like yep. uh, the band that says we want all the green smarties taken out of the the bowl, yeah. you know. And yeah, they yeah. do that. <laughs> they do that just to make sure that they've read the contract. The other people yep. read the contract, minute detail. Yep. So I, I'll want them to bring a yellow highlighter, for example, not blue, yep. not green, not purple. But they'll either forget it or bring a green one. I yep. will not let the class begin until we all are ready. Yeah. And, oh, sorry, I forgot. And I kind of remind them, I, I like that. I say, well, here we go. Uh, I will never put up with I forgot. Yeah. And one thing I really admired about Vietnam is they won every single war they've ever been in for mm -hmm. one reason only. Mm -hmm. They didn't forget their gun. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were prepared mm -hmm. and they yeah. won. You're prepared. You're on, the you're on the path to victory. You're not yeah. prepared. Fuck your sorry. Sorry, huh. don't feed the hungry dogs. You know? Bro. You could read all the books That's you want. You can the problem. Yep. The teachers accept so many stories. You know, yep. oh, okay. You know, they, they, but what is sorry? You know, yep. I'll go to a place here. They'll make a mistake. They'll say sorry, but I'll go there the next day. They'll make the exact same mistake, but yep. say the exact same sorry. There's no change in it, so it's not really accepted as a sorry anymore, right? Yep. So, you know, I can understand your sorry you missed class that your grandmother died three times. Yeah. Um, let's uh. No, I even got my own certificate here, man. It's uh, yeah. see it there. See, I survived. Uh, I survived Jason's English. I know. I'm it's seeing your videos on Facebook. I'm, I'm laughing so hard. I'm dying. But my students get jobs, buddy. My I students see get them, jobs, bro. They're, right? they're really they're good. Either. They're they're challenging. They're, I know. I'm giving them every obstacle. Every I put the fear into them, so they overcome that fear. Public speaking. Yeah. When I. Well, I'll ask them, have you ever spoken that loud before? Never. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. stood in front of so many people before? Never. Have you yeah. ever read an English storybook before? Never. Yeah. Uh, have you been able to sing a song fluently without learning the words? Never. 
So I accomplish. See, that's where I have my success. Mm -hmm. I get them doing things for the first time. They only dream mm -hmm. to do it. And they're just pretty easy things to do. You just need a bit of a push. Yeah. Teachers don't push. Coaches do. Yeah. Teachers, teachers uh, play into your shyness. Okay, yeah. you're shy. It's okay. All right, come yeah. on. Up. I, I want the shyest kid in the class. Yeah. I want that. That's I, that's the life I want to change. I want to change yeah. that kid sitting in the back. Come on up. What me? You know, like yeah. Come on up. This is your day. Come on down. Yeah. You know. Uh, hopefully, you put a spark into him that he wants to sit in the front of the class and he wants to be, hey, I'll join this time. Hey, I'll, I'll get up and speak. But yeah. other than that, he just sat in the back in quiet desperation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know, I know. And, and sometimes you get those kids, like my first two years here, I was teaching public school and nobody wants to listen to you. Like 99% of the kids are just like, whatever teacher. But we, uh, you get that one kid, he's like, this one kid, oh, man, he was studying English, Japanese, German, and uh, and and he's like, I got to get out of here. He's like, I'm going to learn German. German's going to take me, Ger German's going to take me to Germany. If I learn German, I'm going to go to Germany. He's like, I'm out. So you get those kids, man, they're just like kind of smart and and they they have the determination the and they willing to put in the work those are the ones you're like yeah and then they find you on facebook two years later they're like i'm in germany I'm like i made it i'm like yeah i got a bunch you, of kids that went to canada too and you so are not lying are ones, yeah yeah i get i know i get emails dude i'm like i've no. had thousands of students no. i get those emails and my chinese name was dashan dashan mm -hmm. They're like, is this Dashan? I don't know if you'll remember me. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Were you the Asian kid with short black hair? <laughs> you know, that's like, yeah, I don't remember you. Uh, but he's like, yeah, I were, I'm the I'm the CFO of China Mobile now. Ooh, and I yeah. just want to say thanks. At first, we hated you, your rules. Mm -hmm. You made us sit in the front row, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And we hated it. But I just need to say, I want to say thank you very much. You pushed me, got me here. And by the way, Dashan, the girl that I sat beside that you made me sit beside in class, we're now married and have a baby. Nice. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Really? Nice. So yeah, you, when you get those things, uh, you know, I hope, and I'm not being flippant with this. Mm -hmm. I hope one day I'm sitting in a bar, one of these rubby dubby poor bars, drinking yeah. $2 beers with my old men friends and CNN yeah. comes on. I say, see that woman on TV? Yeah. And some guy will say, what? The president of Vietnam? I'll go, yeah. yeah. She was my student. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if you, yeah. I find what they need here is confidence and vocabulary. Yeah. You know, confidence, they need to know five for sure. words for happy, five words for sad, five yeah. words that we don't walk around Canada and America. I'm happy, sad, tired, you know, like we yeah. blissful, gay, glee, joyful, delighted, pleased, jovial, jubilant, yeah. merry, merry Christmas, yeah. um, down, low, blue, morose. Yeah. Um, that's the that's English, you know, give them the yeah. vocabulary to describe it. You know, what degree yeah. of happy? You know, you win a million dollars. How do you feel? Happy. You know, it's yeah. like, you know. You know, and please get rid of the I'm fine. You know, you yeah. can stick a pen in their eye, stick oh, a pen in their God. eye. Go, How are you now? I'm fine. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, I'm in pain. You stupid part. That's and get the, me to the one hospital. they get taught first. I'm fine. Thank you. And you, I'm like, you can't say that in my class. No, I'm fine. Thank you. And you, no, no, no. Well, I tell That's them, outlaw. I tell them, I, 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 I just give it to them directly at this. I yeah. say fine means two things. Yeah. Number one, it means shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I'm driving my car and I said to my girlfriend, yeah. how are you? She's like, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want any more coffee? No, I'm fine. Can I help yeah. you? No, I'm fine. Leave me yeah. alone. Fine. You know, back up. Exactly. And the second meaning for fine is I'm probably a Vietnamese English student and you'll have a very boring conversation <laughs> with me because yeah. I don't know anything else other than yeah. fine. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to, you can't, I'm not going to ask you and no one will ask you why you're fine. Mm -hmm. Like if I got on an airplane, I'll present my class with this scenario. I said, I'll get on an airplane and, uh, you know, one of them Chinese Vietnamese go, oh, there's a foreigner sitting beside me. This is my chance to practice English for 23 hours while we fly. And sure, I'll be, you know, OK, I'll mm -hmm. be accommodating. How are you? He'd be like, yeah. I'm fine. And I just ignore him the whole trip. Yeah. But if he had said, 
oh, I'm a bit nervous. Oh, why? Yeah. I've never yeah. flown on an airplane before. Oh, where are you going? Yeah. Toronto. Oh, wh yeah. what are you doing to Toronto? I'm going to university. Oh, what university? Ryerson. Studying yeah. what? Photography. Do you know anyone? Yo, yeah. here's my number. Take it. So uh, because you gave a feeling, you know, I was able to add, elicit the question why. And that was the spring of the conversation. But if you're like, I'm fine. The other one I tell my students is don't say tired. So yeah. many tired people in Vietnam. You know what yeah. I mean? Like everybody's tired. You're a mother, you're tired. You know, you're a teacher, you're tired. You're, you're everybody's tired. But are you tired and happy? Are you tired and angry? Are you tired and, you know, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm a bit pissed off, angry. Why? Yeah. Because my, my husband forgot my birthday, didn't get me flowers. Well, yeah. Okay, well, you go into that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, how are you? I'm tired. Okay, go to sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, beautiful girl, beautiful girl. How are you? Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. Okay. Now, you just <laughs> lost opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so I tell them, really don't do that. I had a visa friend, uh, uh, an officer who works in the visa to do with visas, and he does the interviews. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jason, um, he goes, do me one favor. Tell them to stop saying I'm fine. Yeah. Like, what, what do you mean? He goes, I got 200 people, Chinese people lined up my door to get visas. I'm yeah. giving 50, 50 away today. Yeah. And the, the student that comes in says, I'm excited. I'm giving yeah. that kid a visa. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it's right. It's like, okay, if someone, everyone say I'm fine, I'm fine. But you walk in, you say, I'm thrilled. Yeah. He's going to take note of that. Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, because I'm going to Canada. And of course, the next question is, what do you, what do you know about Canada? All of those other people that said, fine, big, beautiful, cold. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're going to say vast, multicultural. Yeah. You're going to get that visa. You know, you, yeah. you have just said enough differently yeah. to get your visa. You, you yeah. seem education, you know, teachable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, just big, big giving them teachable. the little tricks like that, giving them mm -hmm. the little tricks like that really helped them out. But guaranteed, you want to, you want to learn it, you, you'll be there. You'll be yeah. there. My advice actually, before I give students, I say, get yourself kind of uh, ready for the culture. You know what I mean? Do while you're there, because you're going to have a whole problem when you're there. Don't, don't just get Chinese friends when you're there. Don't just get yeah. Vietnamese friends in there. Have a few Vietnamese friends for homesickness and that, but get out and meet foreigners. You yeah. know? Yep. Uh, really use the language kind of like i suggested with you with the vietnamese get out and yep. drink with them eat with them play with them yeah karaoke with them. yeah yeah you have to you have to like riding a bike if you only rode up uh, you could learn how to ride a bike on a reading a book but until you're out there riding a bike you gotta go down the hills you gotta you gotta do it man you, got you gotta use it karate, use it or lose karate, it man. karate kid you can't learn karate from a book Right. You're right about the bicycle. You can't just ride a bicycle and expect never to fall down. You yeah. need to wipe out yeah. a few times on a bike. To learn how to ride a bike, you had to wipe mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. jumped over a couple of ramps, yep. got scabbed on your knees, yep. and then you know how to ride a bike. You get to you now you know, oh, that'll happen if I do that. That'll happen. So yep. you know, you got to make the mistakes. You got to really welcome mistakes. If you're gonna try to, oh, I want to go to English class, but I don't want to speak if I make any mistakes, you know that's where that's what i know um yeah. and you'll walk into an you'll walk into an english, english class here and before you walk in you can listen in they're all speaking vietnamese together you know and, yeah. you know i walk in and i'm start correcting i said listen you guys I, I need you to be here five minutes before class as a sports guy warms up his muscles you guys got to yeah. be warming up your english with each yeah. other hey mary i'd like your vest where did you buy that yeah. um you got to start the english thinking getting in there right yeah. Yeah. Uh, use it or lose it, man. Use it or lose it. Yep. Yep. And it's fine, I forgot man. all my Chinese, but if I go back, it is kind yeah. of like riding a bike. The Chinese will come back to me if I go back there. It, right. It's, it's leaving me. Right. I can't wait to go to back to California and order food in a Vietnamese restaurant. I went back like three years ago. Was it three years ago? Maybe four years ago. And I, I, that's I was I had a little bit of Vietnamese. Now I have more. Like I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna be like, uh, mot, uh, mot li uh, cha na well, mot uh, bud. They're gonna be like, what? How the hell? I'll you know I'll me? tell you a true story about the green door again. When I lived in green Vancouver, <laughs> before before I left for Asia, you know I didn't speak any Chinese at all. 
Um, yeah. I can only say Happy New Year, like, but that's even Cantonese way to do it. But I was eating at the green door and ordering and pointing at the menu and talking to her, and she's speaking English to me. And then I went to China for 10 years and went yeah. back to Canada for a bit of a break and uh, went back to the green door, ordered yeah. in full Chinese, buddy. Full nice. Chinese. The nice. same lady was still working there. And she's nice. just like, <laughs> like, wow. You know, like I'm like, oh. ni hao menu, you know, wow. It's uh, I and learn. I didn't pay for my I didn't pay for the lunch. She's like, wow, you just ordered that all. It's that's that's on me. So it was pretty oh, cool. They're wow. Chinese are friendly back home too. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, yeah. man. Yeah, I want to learn. I want to travel, man. I'm, Cause most Americans, like you said, don't have a passport. They never, I mean, they'll go to uh Vegas, they'll go to Miami, they'll they'll fly around America, but no, I mean they'll go to okay, they'll go to Cancun, they'll go to you know Mexico, right. stuff like that. But there's not a lot of like I have no idea like still about these English football teams, or I don't know what's going on in, in India. Like our news sucks. Our news is just like blinders guiding you towards some bullshit. Like we don't have international news really. America um, is is very sheltered when it comes to the international scene. Like even Canada is way more international scene than America. Way more. Even Mexico, they, they like we don't. Americans don't re- usually travel outside of America, so that's why I'm I'm like trying to learn language. I'm, I want to live. I've lived here for five years. Who knows? I. Who knows where I'm gonna live, but yeah, it's 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 good to get out there outside your comfort zone. I, outside I've always your box. enjoyed traveling in the United States. The United yeah. States got oh, I a love lot it of too. fabulous things Beautiful. to see. Dude. There's tons of stuff. But, uh, but, but can, I, I like the shock feature. I like to go and be shocked by the culture. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I'm not shocked yeah. by American culture, you know. Yeah, like, I no. like go, wow, that's cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see some crazy shit I've never seen before. Yeah, that's why I'm going to keep traveling. That's why I want to make more videos and so people back home can see it. Like, oh, shit. That's, I mean, they can see it, but like, like to your bring videos, them man, out here. Good job. Bring them out. They, I, a lot of my friends want to come out here now and, and like COVID just blocking. I got like, it's, oh, God. COVID. Yeah. Killing uh, me. I really feel bad for Vietnam. It's the t- I like, feel bad for everywhere the tourism, but uh, yeah, what a terrible time to happen have it happen. You know, it yeah. was just going. Vietnam was just going up. Oh, People, like, going were, great. I, I could see Vietnam with a world champion soccer game happening here yeah. you know, in the future. That's you know they got the infrastructure building it. They got the train going in that mm. like the sky train. Um, yeah, totally. So. They might Hope make the Olympics it to the World Cup too. this year. They might actually make it. There's a chance. Can you? Got a chance. You were, were you? Were you here? I guess it was a couple years ago when the football they were like, mm-hmm. they won or they were close to winning. The streets were nuts, Bro. like packed. Insane. Packed. I thought like, it was a riot. I thought I, I. I was like, I was like, oh shit! I gotta get out of here because people are like driving down the street with the flag. Da-da-da, Vietnam. I'm like, oh fuck. I'm like, ah, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> this is a fucking, what's going on? And then I seen a soccer game. Everyone, I was like, Whoosh. God damn, I thought it was a, I thought it was a fucking riot, dude. Because the, the yeah. whole, they're setting off fireworks. Trucks were parked in the middle of the street, honking their horns. I was like, oh fuck, I'm dead. Well, I, let me I, put I, my fucking helmet, on, <laughs> my mask on. Like, oh shit. I, I've never seen that before. It was just a. Like I, I could, I, and pretty much right till four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. a million people out on the streets, yep. a sea of red flags. Yep. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, yep. we're a lot of happy people, a lot of drunk people. Yep. I try, yeah, talk about putting on that helmet. Yeah, yep. I, I stayed off the roads that for those for about a week. I did a lot too. of drunk drivers. I don't do that. People. Yeah. I've been trapped in that shit before when I didn't know what it was. I was like, oh, fuck. It, 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 yeah, people just going yeah. bonkers. I I won't go down. I won't go down to Bouvien Street on New Year's or Halloween mm-hmm. or Christmas no. or any of that. Just too many people. Yeah. If it something sparks off, 
Yeah. How you, you know, you're there. You. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, re- Vietnam is relatively a safe place to be. Very safe. You know, safe you gotta be ca- careful and cautious. But uh, yeah, if you can avoid something, if you sense it, get that spider sense, think, yeah, yeah I'm going to avoid that. You're, yeah. you're better to avoid it. Yeah. I lo- yeah. Crowds. I don't really like crowds anyway. Like, Boivian used to be so crowded, you could just get pickpocketed and you, you wouldn't know. So, exactly. Exactly. So crowded. Yeah. Um, I've been robbed twice, robbed yeah. twice in Vietnam, and that's Bouvien is just outside of Bouvien. I had yeah. my bag snatched from yeah. me. Yeah. Um, that took the fun out of Bouvien for me. Plus, yeah. Bouvien is just more for the tourists. Yeah. So today, it's like a ghost town. Everything's wow. closed up, boarded up, gone. Yeah. I don't know how they lost. Sucks, man. All these tourist places, bro, like the the tour bus companies and the the you know go see the Mekong Delta driving around on a little boat. Like all those people are getting hit hard, and those are Uh, really good people, man. Really good people. Yeah. Open it it up. Let's get let's get COVID out of here, man. Fuck. I want to go outside. It's, we're gonna have to do but we, something. But we're going to Mars. Woohoo! Yeah. We got yeah. money for Mars, but we can't cure the SARS, man. It's crazy. What's this world, man? Bezos gonna fly. Bezos gonna go there. Bezos company's getting bailed out now by the American government, I think. I heard. I don't know. I've been reading. Come on, man. Like oh, airline man. companies getting all bailed out. This is crazy, man. Why okay, why don't we Freaking no, no. I, this is a whole new. Sh- There's another show we could do this on. on that sure. shit. Jesus. I'm, I've kind of had it up to here with the COVID anyway. Yeah, bro. Fuck this shit. Well, all right, Jason. I had a lot of fun again. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. <laughs> yeah. We'll hang out, bro. We'll hang out when this COVID's over. And we'll we'll get down to we'll talk. Uh, talk business and all that stuff and um uh guys go see go see jason's movie ascent into gladness not madness not decent it's ascent into gladness it's on youtube 23 chapters just type that in jason mackey m-a-c-k-i-e jason mackey no no type in ascent into gladness uh, jason mackey yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Ascent in the glass. <laughs> and, Type that in. I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the description box. Awesome. You'll awesome. get it. It's it's really Jason tells great stories, man. Oh my God. It's it's funny. It's funny. It's well made. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And uh we're yeah. gonna meet, we're gonna meet for coffee when we find out if Zoom is from China or America. That's right. We're betting. One of us we're betting. Fine. We'll make we'll make it a double. We'll bet a double maybe if, double shot. Maybe if any of your viewers know, they might add it in the comments. Yeah, comment. Someone let me know. Okay. Head office. The head office in America doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. If the Chinese company with the head office in America, it's still Chinese. You know company. what? I feel like you're right now. I feel like my 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 tables are turning, but we uh-huh. we'll still I I got you on the coffee anyway. Um, Good enough. Jason Mackey, everybody. Thank you, Jason, for coming. We'll see you again, bro. See you soon, man. Thanks for your time. No problem, bro. See you. Bye, man.